Apostle Ricardo and Apostle Kathleen in the house. All the way from Trinidad. Amen. Amen. The church is global prophetic ministries. Amen. Can we bless the Lord for them one more time? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite Apostle Ricardo Vincent. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
We want to confuse the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to go into two minutes of tongues. Hallelujah. And let me tell you again, when you speak in tongues, you unlock things that are in heaven. The understanding of the research is that when you speak in tongues, there are certain things that, that are in heaven that is like a key that the angel will go and receive it for you. Also, it confuses the devil. And if you speak in tongues for an hour, you speak in tongues for half an hour, it puts you in a different dimension. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we just want to activate that. We're going to speak in tongues for two minutes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to just uh, be obedient to the Lord. If any one of you, you have uh, not been filled with the Spirit, uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, uh, while we are speaking in tongues, you could just come to the front, uh, lift your hands, uh, and just you just speak and say hallelujah, and you're going to feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you have never been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I encourage you to come up right now. Just come right now to the front right now. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a wave that's going to come. Hallelujah. And you just focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on him on the throne. Hallelujah. As we speak. Hallelujah. Let's just go. Rabakata. Reshak nakaraboto. Renenta basak takabasanda. Ramakata. And speak with passion. Rubeke takasteremoto. Ramakata karabasanda karabasa. Rabakata karabotag. Ramakata karabata rabasha. Ramakata remekete. Romake keremechondo. Rananta. Ramata kereshova. Ramba rabakasa kabata. Rabakata. Rosha keteke. Embreke karabota. Embreke. Embreke. Embreke ramata. We overturn. Rabakata kata. All evil order. Ramaka teke besenda bata. By fire. Romake te de besanda. Romakata, Iba Kataka Rabasa, all evil gathering, gathering of witchcraft, Rashak Takabata, Remeke Terebeso, that there be a rain of fire from heaven. Now, Robakata Mata, Ramata, 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 we confuse them. We confuse them. The plans of the enemy. Come on, come on. Come on, speak, speak, speak. Rasha, pray, pray, pray. Eshe, 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 rabara takapoto. Indeke baranta kabasa. Rama tabasa. In the second heaven now. Roba kataka sadawasa. Release the blood of Jesus. 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 We say confusion, 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 confusion in the camp of the enemy. Rama kabasa. Rama teke rebesi. Roba takabasa. I forbid right now. Any communication in the second heaven. I disrupt Rabaka. Disrupt Rabata. Disrupt Rabata. Every evil strategy. Ramaka de Mene. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. Romekate. In the Rere Shata. Ramakata. Rabakata. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray. 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 Robata Tasata. Robata Tasa. Rashata Sata. Those of you in the front, Ramakata, open your mouth, Takabasa, open your mouth, Rabasa, loud, 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 Rakata, Rabasa, Rana, Rana, let the enemy, Rabaka, let the neighbor here, Romeka, the Basanda, Rana, 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 come on, come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, Rakrakata, Rere, 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 be filled right now. Receive. Be filled. Be filled. You can't speak two languages. Rabaka by faith, by faith. Receive right now. Ramakarata. Receive, receive, receive. Yes, yes, yes. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Yes, receive all of it. If she can get it, you can get it. Ramaka Dabasa. Rara open your mouth. 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 Receive Rada Rada. Rara Rada Rada Sakada. Receive Rara Sha. Rara Rada Sada. Be fell. Be fell. Rashakaka. Come on. Come on. Come on. Aramada don't stop. 
We rain Rabasa fierce arrows of fire right now. Rasha Kabata Rabaka this rock this rock Rakata Kabasa in the Mikaba Road of Ram. We render right now all form of witchcraft. No at point. Basa Basa Kabasa Basa come on pray pray pray. They share it. Fire Lord fire. Re he he Rebasanda from heaven from heaven. We release right now angels of fire. Arabasa Kabasa from heaven from heaven. We release right now angels of miracles. Shakta Karanda from heaven from heaven. We release angels right now. Rakapka warring angels. Let the host, let the host of war be released right now. Rarata Kabata. Receive, receive, and even now, Heavenly Father, we surround this place right now with the seal of the blood of Jesus right around this building. I apply the blood of Jesus upon the floor, upon the chairs right now. Father God, upon the doorpost right now. Father God, even over this building, I decree and declare there is no roof right now, but heaven is wide open over this roof in the name of Jesus. I blind the eyes of any monitoring spirit in the name of Jesus. I set confusion now. Father God, I say your angels are moving around, moving around between. Father God, your saints now. Even right now, I burst right now. I burst those evil cords that bound Rashak Nakataba, Rashak Naka, surgery, O Lord. Release your surgery angels right now. Robaketa, Saknaka, Robokoto, Prasak Nabasa. Heavenly Father, even now, dear Lord, we consecrate, O Lord, this time, this period. Father God, even at your assigned appointed time for your people and sons and daughters, we, O Lord, consecrate it now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus, we submit ourselves, O Lord, to you, Holy Spirit, O Lord. We ask that you come take control. Let eyes be open, ears be open, hearts be open, O Lord, to receive. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. around my head now. Praise the name of the Lord. Every every time is something new with the Lord. Hallelujah. It is about you. It is not about me. It is not about apostle, prophetess. It's about you. That is why the Lord is here. Not so much we are here, but the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Before I start, I want to get some testimonies. The Lord was here and he worked among the people. And I want to get some testimonies. And even when we testify, just like the leper, who God began to heal, heal some, but the one who came back to Jesus was totally healed. So when you testify, the Lord make it so, whole, totally. So before I continue the message that the Spirit of the Lord shared with me, I want to have some testimony. If any one of you have a testimony, let me see your hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll ask the sister, you just come and share your testimony and then you can share yours. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, I was born with arthritis and the doctors told my mother I would never walk. Did at 15 months. So here and there, I have problems with uh, my spinal cord. Just over the weekend, I 
lift the feet up to lift to get something in my cubby. And all of this part of my body down here, I couldn't move. I, I couldn't move. And I went to work. I was dragging. I was dragging. I was dragging my leg under the pain with the shooting through my body. I managed to do six hours. But then I decided that I need to go to the hospital. So when I went to the hospital, it was spinal meningitis. You're not supposed to sit longer than maybe an hour or so. But I sat almost 10 hours in that hospital in pain. They told me that they waited on everybody every 10 hours. And I sat there and sat there. And not trying to be carnal, but I could not even go to the bathroom. The nurse had to help me put my clothes to go to the bathroom. That's how bad it was. A lot of pain I was in. So then my daughter, the granddaughter, called and got on them. They didn't give me anything to take. I just sat there and sat there. Nothing in pain. So when my daughter got on the doctor, they came. And, um, well, they had examined me once, but I went back. I got there about 10 after 7. I left about maybe 10 o'clock the next morning. All night long, I sat. I sat in that chair. So my, my two uh, relatives got called and got on them about that and said, she should not be sitting in that chair that long. Of course, I was praying and doing all of that. I'm not going to lie, I didn't have a song at the time, but I was in pain. So when the doctor finally came because my daughter had gotten on them, he came in there and gave me a couple of pills. I don't know what they were. So I was trying to stand double jacket. He said, you, 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 you can't stand up. I said, I'm going to stand up. I tried to stand up, but I couldn't. And I, he said, you are not going home until you can walk. And I said to myself, I'm not going to stay in this hospital. I'm getting out of here. That's, I'm getting out of here. So he gave me the three pills, whatever they were. When he came back, I, was, I started working it. I started trying to lift my leg. I couldn't even get out of the chair. Out the chair. When he left, I, when I told him I wasn't going to stay in the hospital, I started trying to move my leg. When that doctor came in there, I was able to stand up. I was able to stand up. And they did some more x-rays. I came home. They released me to come home. I called Pastor Sam and Pastor Marsha. I know I called them. Pastor Marsha prayed for me. And I thank God for the prayers of the saints of God. There's power by la 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 so there's power in prayer. Power in prayer. So I went home. The pain was still there. I got in the bed, I slept, they gave me patches to put a lower lap. And so after I slept a little while, I tried to get up. I was able to get up. God did it. And I said, I was not going to miss a service. I'm coming to the service. So when I got to the service, I was still dragging a little bit. I couldn't praise him. I'm a praiser. I couldn't praise him where I wanted to. I lifted up my hands and all like that. I think it was Apostle, you lay hands on me. Glory to God. He lays hands on me. I went down. I laid there for I don't know how long. And the devil spoke. He said, nothing's been done. I said, devil, it's already been done. And I got up. I got up off that floor. And that was when I started running around. I shot up. God did it. I give him all the praise. I give him the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just give God some praise? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a testimony for our sister. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God. Um, as you all heard me last night, I was explaining that um, I couldn't raise my arm. But what I didn't tell you is that I went to the doctor about two weeks ago, and they diagnosed me with frozen shoulder. And um, I have no idea how it happened. It was just I could move my arm, and then all of a sudden I couldn't. And uh, when I tried to move it, it was a lot of pain. I mean, I literally will be in tears at sometimes if I jerk it the wrong way, try to reach for something, because you 
I'm used to using. And, um, but the doctor told me I had frozen shoulder. And then I was supposed to have an MRI. But it was going to cost me like $400 to get the MRI. And the insurance company denied the MRI. That was supposed to happen Tuesday. So then I started thinking, well, God, are you going to heal me this weekend? Because so I don't, that way I won't have to pay this $400. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So, and then, I, then we, the, we put the song on the list, he, You're More Than Able. And yeah. that's when I said, I, I know he's going to heal. And I said, it will be before the end of this conference. And last night I was able to raise my arm. Higher than I was. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Able to raise it. I can raise it up a little bit higher, a lot more higher than I could without the pain. And I know by the end of this weekend, it's going to be completely Praise healed. God. Because huh? his wife came over and told me. She came over and she prayed with me. She said, complete healing. And I received that. I believe it. And I know hallelujah. I've seen Praise people God. healed. And I know he can heal them. He can heal me. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God, sister. Before you sit, this is what we're going to do. God is healing you now. I want... Uh, and the pastor to you, you're going to lay hands on her right now. Yes, you going to lay hands on her. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And praise God. And I want you to, in, in the name of Jesus, stretch your hand right up to God. I speak to every muscle. I speak to every joint. I command them, come in alignment now in the name of, receive it in Jesus' name. Right now, be healed now. Now, right now, right now, take it, take it, take it. There it is, there it is, there it is. Receive all of it. I speak life into that arm. I speak life into that arm. Ramakata sa takaro ropa takasa fire ropa fire ropa koto rakata kabasa. Receive all now, 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 now. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There it is. It is yours. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise in the middle. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise in the middle of the Lord. Just give it my lovely wife, my fault. Praise God. Hallelujah. So those of you who are listening online, you see what can be also your reality hallelujah because jesus is here amen hallelujah praise the new lord praise god Hallelujah. We give him praise. This meeting here is like a strategic gathering. This is, I wouldn't call this a church meeting. This is a strategic gathering like the uh, apostles who went into the upper room. God is going to be doing something new by fire tonight and tomorrow and tomorrow night. Hallelujah. Praise God. And there's it's tomorrow evening. Sorry. Morning. Yes. Hallelujah. But he'll be continuing in the evening, even when you're not here. Hallelujah. Praise God. What I want to talk to you today about is redemption in his glory, which is continuation from yesterday. And there is a a slide I want to show, but I'm going to cue you to show that slide. And that slide is going to be a confirmation of what the Lord says he's going to do for you now. So last day, remember, we spoke about the high place that the Lord has been taking his believers now. And he wants you to go into that high place. But there is our battle in the high place for position. Your position and the enemy want to be in charge over the earth. He was in charge over the facilities and over the systems of the world and but he wants all and God is stopping it now. Hallelujah. With your participation the Lord is speaking. His voice is going from uh, is thrown by fire. 
out of the fire we hear the voice of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is this season. Two years ago, when the Lord spoke to the church and Israel, and it was 5783, and the symbol that they used spoke about the temple or the tent being built, the Lord said to me, tell the church, I am building my temple in my people. I am coming inside of my people and I'm putting a high place inside of them. So then I spoke to our uh, the people in our ship and I said, you are now the moving temples in the earth. But then in the next year, it was 5784, where the Lord says he's completing his temple, and then he started to speak about his glory, which is his fire. He said, you are now a walking fire in the earth. Hallelujah! I don't know, only about five people, and a prophet has got excited that you are the moving fire in the earth. Hallelujah! So if you're moving fire, you also the voice as we speak about the prophetic voice and the prophetic voice coming out of the fire and the glory, but also you are the prophetic voice. So the Lord is speaking. But God wants you to understand, sons and daughters, that the earth is waiting for you to be revealed and you're going to be revealed now. The earth is waiting, but the Lord is revealing his people now. But we need to understand how God communicates. And I say, you know, God has been giving uh, 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 messages in, this, in the moon and the sun and the stars by the eclipse. And by, you know, by the eclipse. And as you look at the eclipse and they're talking about the eclipse, remember the, this, uh, the, uh, the, the double eclipse and everyone was talking about it. But I would say God was giving us what's up messages from heaven. If you could understand. Because when he gives the eclipse synchronized with the Jewish holidays is a message. And I want even after we leave for you to remain with this understanding that anytime you see a festival, God is speaking. When you see a sign in the moon, God is speaking. What's up messages from heaven? But the Lord is also speaking in the earth. So we're seeing physical fire in the earth. Now, you know this is an apostolic church, and in our ship we normally dish out steak and beef, no milk. So I'm not going to give you guys any milk tonight. So let me tell you, there is also a judgment taking place in the earth. And the judgment is not just to men. But the Lord is judging angels also. I know that might be a little heavy for some. But he is also, there is, there has been released a judgment angel to judge the angels that have been moving across the earth. There are things that are not even written in the word of God that God is doing. Because for some people it's not, it doesn't really uh, make sense for you to know that then. But because we are now God's prophetic people where he's causing heaven and earth to overlap. And Jesus has already overlapped with you because he says, I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you and you are in me and I am in you and you are in me and I am in you. And therefore you are me. Hallelujah. But when there is judgment, there uh, is files have to be presented. The Holy Spirit is just taking me in another direction. There's files that are presented that God that God has and the enemy has on you that you would need to change. Did you bring the files? Just like Job and say, Here we have some files. This person has been smoking before they go to church. God, what do you say about that? I have legal right. I can touch the body and all of a sudden cancer. So let me tell you, destroy those files. Destroy those files in the spirit. So there's judgment, but judgment uh, comes so that a verdict is going to uh, 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 arise where the Lord does not want to bring a final a judgment to execute, but he wants repentance. 
That is why there's a judge. The judge, if there was uh, no judge, then everyone just goes to jail. But there's also the voice of the Lord speaking in the seasons. And the voice of the Lord is speaking in cycles. Each one of you also have a cycle. A cycle in your life. Remember, what I'm, I'm telling you about today is redemption of your time in the glory of the Lord. You have... Uh, uh, you should have been further uh, 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 to where you are right now. You should have been further than that now. And you've been going through a cycle and a cycle and a cycle and a cycle with men and a cycle and a cycle of the abuse and a cycle. No, it's going to stop now. So God speaks in the cycle. Each person has a cycle. I know my cycle. My wife knows my cycle. And because God is so perfect in all his, his, his ways, what he has done, he has synchronized our cycle with the cycle of Israel and Trinidad. Our birthday is in April, where a lot of the Jewish holidays synchronize. We can't forget it. And the interesting thing is, my wife's birthday is the first, mine is the seventh. I can never forget her birthday. You know, you ladies, you know, you, know, you forgot my birthday. I cannot. Because seven days away. And, and you know, isn't it interesting? My birthday is the seventh. The Lord said, You will remember me always for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. And He speaks through His holy messengers. Why am I giving you all of this? Because after a few days, I will not be here, but you still need to know how the voice of the Lord is going to be coming to you. I know when I come back in a, maybe a, a few months or so. There's going to be a lot of visitation and some would say, I've seen an angel and I went to, you know, to a person and I said, oh, I saw an angel. And, and then, you know, everybody was seeing angels and, and whoa, whoa. You know, prophets, they prophesy things to be. They prophesy what was and they also prophesy what is. And I'm telling you, that is, hallelujah, to be. So let's talk about Drill down into your redemption in his glory now. The first point in there five, God is a God of numbers and assessment. Write that down. He is a God of numbers and assessment. I got it. Hallelujah. There is an am a amount or measurement that God is looking for in your life. Are you measuring up to who God say you are? Are you uh, 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 Is it that your, your body is measuring up in terms of what it's supposed to be doing? The Bible says that God has appointed a certain amount of years for man to live. But many die because they have been abusing their life and abusing the principles of God and the Bible. And we were just talking the other day, if you are a believer, this is my uh, theory. It's not in the Bible, but there are some things that could relate. And I was talking to the prophetess Marsha. The Bible says when we see Jesus, we will age no more because we will be with him. But there are a lot of people that are in prayer meeting. I expect this church to only have uh, young face looking people because this church has plenty of prayer. So my understanding is, okay, so the closer I get to Jesus until I stop aging, I will, aging will decrease. Even my apostle, when his friends see him, they say, but how are you looking so young? They vex. That should not be. So there is a measurement God has appointed a certain amount of time for you and also for your body to, to be healthy. There's a measurement. Let me tell you, God assesses time and he measures things. Apparently, God is a mathematician. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11 says, I have to give some facts. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights 
in a bag are of his making. So the Lord is weighing the nations and the Lord is weighing the families and the Lord is also weighing you. And you would see nations, some nations are going to be destroyed in a day, some nations are going to be revived in a day, I prophesy. That says the Lord. Because they would have been found wanting in the measure that the Lord is using. Now when we think of someone is using a scale to weigh, there is a standard. So the Lord would take Ricardo and say, okay, this is who I created Ricardo to be according to Psalm 100 and, um, I think it's 139 verse 16. It says, all of your days have been written in a book in heaven to be lived out. So you can find it and see if I quoted the correct thing. Yes, all of your days, everything that you're supposed to do, I being here, is it correct? One to the next. I being here was already written. It can't be changed. You getting healed, already done. And therefore, when we say a, a, a completed, a done as it is in heaven, let it be in the earth, we sing as it is written already, let it be done. And so now when you're praying and you're using a scripture, you understand Jesus says, as it is written, because it's already written in a book, let it be done. And that is how I pray now. I say, as it is written, let it be done. Oh, Holy Spirit. There's so many things. But in heaven, there are many books that relates to you and relates to this church. There are book, books of accomplishment that you're supposed to complete. There are books, there's another book for creation, things that you're supposed to create. If you are a musician, there's a whole book with songs that you should have been writing. I said, I said where you got that from? Okay, testimonies. There's one guy who went to heaven, the Lord uh, gave him a death experience, he went to heaven, and then the angel took him into a room with a whole set of books like a library. And then when he looked, he saw a pile of books just thrown in a pile, and another one. And he says, what is that? He says, that is your books. Okay. So then he, he took one from off of the shelf and said, this is also your book. And when he opened the book, on the book was also David had a book, and, and he asked, what is that? That is the Psalms of David. And he opened his book, and it was blank. He says, how it is blank? He says, because there are a lot of worship songs you're supposed to write, and you have not done it. Now what Minister to me, Apostle, is then when he started to say, well, I was really busy, and the among the things that I'm doing, and you know, I've been attacked, and you know, and, and the angel says, the Lord says, you have 16 years to do it, and you have not done it. I said, oops. Oops. The Lord does not care that you are going through pressure, and you know, and you can't do it. He just wants you to do it. So when you speak now, and when you pray, Whatever is written in the book for my children, let it be done. Whatever is written, let it be done. I'm supposed to be healed already, and therefore I'm going to walk. Whatever is written is supposed to be done. Uh, the Lord says, God, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to fall upon my children. Let it be done. Let it be done. Let it be done. Are you getting anything? So when I say redemption in the glory, the glory is the presence of the Lord. And even as the glory is here, and the, and the Lord is ministering to him, because where the glory is, there's going to be a manifested presence. God is going to make himself known. And the Lord is saying, you need to redeem your time. Psalm 90 and 12 says, Lord, teach us the number of our days. That we may gain a heart of wisdom. Also, when I realized this guy couldn't write his books in 16 years and the angel wasn't concerned that he was getting challenges, I wrote seven. <laughs> I think it's six months, I can't remember. I wrote seven thus far. I said, I need to get busy. And how the Lord is going to work with you now is, I believe how he's working with me is that he's going to be sending you as people say, downloads, downloads, downloads. So I read five books at the same time. I have to. And while I'm reading the five books, I have to prepare messages. And while I'm reading the five books, I have to write book. 
have to read other people's book, but I have to write a book. And then the Lord has given me download, and sometimes, oh God, there's so much, there's so much. The Lord says, you're too slow. You're too slow. You're, so, you're supposed to know how to, how to do this thing, man. So, so therefore, even right now, God is teaching you how to number your days. So, apparently, God is a mathematician. He likes numbers. He likes order. So, time and order is important. And therefore, the season that we're in, that we speak about the wide open heaven, is important for God, for you. He's connected to numerical concepts. Everything with God is divine calculation. He does not waste time. And this is one thing similar to myself and Apostle, uh, you know, Apostle Samuel. I like to be on time. I don't like to waste time. I'm not involved in any activity, any ministry that's, that does not relate to what God has for me in heaven. In Trinidad, there are a lot of ministers and they say, Apostle Ricardo, we have in this, you want you to come. And, and, and then I would say, uh, I can't make it. Some of them will get vexed. You say, I call you to this and they can't come. I say, because you have people that could go to that. That is not for me. It's not for me. I need to be focused on what God has for me to do. Else I will get both. And I tell you, God both me plenty of time, I get clout. I don't know if I made give you this testimony here, but sometimes I don't know even where I made these testimonies, but I made this while I think it was also online. Where there's a time that somebody came to my house to cut the grass and I was doing a proposal for some contract and I was very annoyed because the person saying Good morning, good morning, good morning. I mean, the, the, the flesh in me came out. Uh, uh, so I went out to tell them, you know, leave the gate, you know. Leave the gate. So my wife said, oh gosh, don't tell them that. Find out what they want. Thank God for wives. So when I went, you know, I went, not with my Christian face, I said, yeah, what do you want? He said, mister, mister, uh, could I cut your grass? I said, you want to cut my grass? Yeah, you have paint to cut grass? No. I saw a lawn mower. So I cut, could I cut your grass? I said, all right. So I told my wife, he said, let them come and use the lawn mower. So he used the lawn mower. To make a long story short, when he finished, he said, you could drop my home. So I went to my wife again. You know, sometimes you know the answer, but you try and pay your wife to say the opposite. I, 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 I said, babe, this guy wants me to drop, drop, drop him away. I drop him home now. So I jump in my car and we start driving. The pastor, we drive and we drive and I look at the time 15 minutes. I say, uh, How far are you living? He said, Not far. We're going down the highway. I look at the time half an hour. I say, How far are you living? Not far. Then the Spirit of the Lord, who had already in heaven, in my book, written that for his life. The Holy Spirit says, Tell him about Jesus. So I'm driving, same thing. Should I say what you're going through? No, 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 no. Should I say you're saved? No, 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 no. no. And while, I, while I'm going through all of that, uh, you know, all of a sudden he say, tell me about Jesus. You're going to too slow. Too slow. I, you know, I mean, it's sounding funny, but that was bad. I got buff. I wasn't moving fast enough. So then, I mean, it's kind of easy now because he said, tell me about Jesus. So I was able to tell him about Jesus. I led him to the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. But hear what? Two days afterwards, at my gate, another person come. Good evening, good evening. I could cut your grass. So when I went now, it was his uncle. He says, um, you know the fellow in the uh, orange coverall? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, it was my nephew. He died. I said, oh. Oh, and the Lord caused his uncle to come to tell me if you did not bring him to the Lord. Hallelujah. You understand? I mean, and, 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 I mean, this is not in church. God expects us when he weighs us in the balance, not only in church to get people saved, 
Only when you, anytime you walk, you are a walking light. You are the walking glory. You are the walking fire. Hallelujah. I was sharing, I, I was sharing with the apostle one day. I went on, uh, just to visit my bishop and, and my wife was, you know, the shopping and every day somebody coming to me to tell him about the Lord. Are you getting anything? So he weighs everything. He measures everything. He does not waste time. He doesn't expect you to do so. He is saying now more than ever that the church needs to redeem the time. What's your numbering system? Also, it includes your tithes and giving. You know, there is a research that says only about 5 to 8 percent of the people in churches tithe. What craziness is that? I hope every one of you are tithe. Because the same message that I, I'm showing you, this little piece that I shared with my ship, because I want them to be blessed. When you tithe, the Holy Spirit just allows me to do whatever He wants to do, so I'm just going to do it. When you tithe, you put a protection around your blessing. That's why the Lord says, the devourer can come. Put a protection. But then you have to sow now to measure. Because God is a God of measurement. I want to measure my blessing now. So this is for my son. This is for my house. This is for the ministry. And when you continue to give like that, God is going to be doing so, 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 so. Until you say, oh God, oh God, oh, I get blessed too much. What to do? I am going to be meeting with some ministers when I go back to Trinidad because it's not going to be good for the earth. So we, I digress a bit, we are going to be coming up with a plan with the church because it's going to be terrible financially. But those who have been tithing and giving, you're all right. But if you're not, you're going to be in the same measure with the reprobate, ungodly, sinful people. Though you are Christian, no, Apostle didn't tell me to talk about it. I didn't even know I was going to talk about it. But that is a measure that the Lord is measuring even now. And uh, yes, I was talking to a minister who don't even tithe. I said, you tithe? He said, no, I was give. So when you give, the enemy comes snatch. When you give, the enemy comes snatch. He said, oh gosh, it's like I'm putting these things in a bag with holes. Yeah, the Bible says that. Let me leave that and move on. Let me move on. So as this point, as we talk about, God is a God of numbers and assessment. We have to understand the mind of God. An example of this number system is in Judges 7, 4 to 16. I wouldn't read it, but you know the story where God wanted to have a a successful battle, you know, with a Joshua, but it had too much people who would not listen. Because in this time, it is a time of war, everybody must be in rank, and you and sometimes God is gonna ask you to do strange things. Now the Bible didn't talk about the details, but the Lord says, uh, the Lord says in uh, in verse 4, he says, But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many, bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. I don't know how he tested that. Maybe put in the mind and say, uh, lap some water. He said, no, nah, I'm not a dog. Go far off. I know I don't have the faith. So God chose 300 men who were able, willing to do whatever God wants to do, although it sounds crazy, and had no fear. Hmm? God is a God of numbers. And he's looking at your equation. He's looking at my equation for you to redeem the time. So if you have to study God, as I'm going to move on to the next aspect here, we need to consider timing, cycles, seasons, numbers, weights, 
measurement. Why is it cycles? Because even the entire history of the world goes in cycles. And you have a cycle. Second point here now. Seeing that God is measuring, we need now redeem the time and measure up. So write that down. Redeem the time and measure up. Ephesians chapter 5 and 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And if the days are even more evil now, how much more evil, much we have to redeem the time. That's why I guess God is saying, you know what, read five books at the same time, write plenty of books, go to plenty of places, bam, 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 bam. So, you know what? This is a church of superheroes. One more sister across here understand. Let me just talk to you. Yeah. This, this is the time of superheroes like you. Hallelujah. And superheroes have superpowers. Hallelujah. I remember in the early when my youngest son, when we, um, before he even went, went with me to prophesy, he would say, and dad, you have superpowers. Yeah, you have superpowers. You have superpowers. And when we go to prophesy you know, at the age of 14, he said, Remember, better pick a book. I said, Oh, you have superpowers. So you have superpowers. The days are evil. This season and the cycle that the Lord has given us is a season of his breath and a season of wide open windows is redeeming the time by the grace of God. Write that down. And we only can do it because the days are evil. And the time here, it is talking about a Kairos time. It is talking about a selected time. This season, one of the most important seasons in the church life. The global life is one of the most important seasons even for America. Hmm. Hear what? As much as you could do in this season, I just put it like that. I, I, try, I try not to say so much. As much as you could do in this season, people, do it. Do it. This is a season because it's a Cairo season. It's a selected season. It will dictate your next level or next state of existence. Apostle Kathy says, the next level seed that is of God. So what, what you do now is going to dictate how your future season is going to be. It is a positioning now. You need to position yourself under the wide open heaven. You need to climb that mountain, calibrate yourself, and position yourself. So, I would say if I'm new, I would say I must calibrate. I must align to fight. I must war in the spirit. I must redeem my time. And when I say align to fight, it depends on who you align with, what church you align to, because God was going to set people with particular anointing, and that anointing is going to flow. You understand what I'm saying? Now, for those who saw the testimonies of these two young ladies, Luke 17 and 19 was an evidence of someone who redeemed the time, and this is the story of the leper, who was healed and then made whole so that the leprosy was not only stopped via the open door and open heaven, and open up for healing, but his body was also fully redeemed and restored from destruction. That should register with you as you position yourself at the feet of Jesus tonight. See, God is doing it, so I'm not too concerned these days whether it's going to happen because I know it's going to happen. Apostle and myself, we are just instruments the Lord use, like a musician. 
And even when you take up a stick and you're playing, the, the stick just has to be obedient to the hand. You understand what I'm saying? And the stick doesn't say, I wonder if the drum is going to make a song. Bang! No. So when I give you this instruction and I tell you that the Lord is going to heal you, hear what? I'm not going to say, I wonder if God is going to heal. I am a stick in the hand of the Lord. The Lord will heal. So the third point I want to come to in terms of you redeeming your time in his glory or in his presence even tonight is that right here now there is an overwhelming manifestation of God's glory. Now I'm going to say this and I'm not saying it as if I'm proud. I'm saying it because that is how the scripture says or, or puts it. When I speak, things would be. Because my father, when he created the universe, he says, let there be and there was. And he said, yeah, well, let's make some children just like we. Yeah, let's make children just like we. So when they say, let there be, there will be. Hallelujah. So when we speak, and when I say we, all of us, all the ministers, and we say, be healed, then you be healed. You are healed. So I know from my experience, when I say something, it is already happening. So the manifestation of God's glory, an overwhelming manifestation, you see it tonight. Some of you yesterday received deliverance, and some of you are going to receive deliverance again. And let me give you a, a, a hint in terms of what would be those evidence of your deliverance. When there's deliverance, sometimes you, you may shake you know, uh, uncontrollably sometimes when you're getting delivered. Or when you're being delivered, all of a sudden you want to cough or you want to sneeze. Or when you're getting delivered, oh, God, you just have to cry. Maybe that is the nicest one. Some of you, you want to throw up. Just let it be. So I'm telling you, many of you received your deliverance yesterday. Hallelujah. How many of you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wouldn't come wrong and, and ask you whether you throw up or whether you cry. Or, I wouldn't ask you that. I just want you to be aware. So when it's happening, you know, gosh, I'm being delivered. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a book that I wrote. It called, it's, it's called a, a Total Deliverance. And it's also suggesting that even ministers, everybody in church, need to cons constantly examine themselves to be delivered. It might not be de deliverance from drinking. It might not be deliverance from, you know, but it might be fear. It might be something. You understand? Dream the swamp. Hallelujah. And why I say that? Because many times, you know, I'm worshiping, and all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, no, and I think I wipe it. No, I leave it. I say, let the people see. I'm crying. Oh, Lord, you're so good. <laughs> because I'm being delivered. I am being delivered. Hallelujah. You know, so after yesterday, when we looked at the voice of the Lord moving to the high place, what are the things that we have to do? And now the Lord is telling us. Ezekiel chapter. Four and the verse two. It says, And behold, the glory and brilliance of God of Israel was coming from the way of the east, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this relates to a scripture we, we spoke about yesterday. Is it Ezekiel chapter 4 or Ezekiel chapter 3? Yeah. That's right. 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Because I'm seeing in my notes here, I have a 4 and a 3.
Oh, sorry, it's 43, right? 43, sorry about that. As one pastor would say, I'm only human and I'm the earth. Hallelujah. And maybe that is to get your attention. So Ezekiel chapter 43, right? And behold, and when the scripture used behold is like, ta-da! You know, it's like, whoa! The glory and the brilliance. Isaiah 60 says that the brilliance is going to come up from you. You know, the sun shines and reflects from a glass. And so God is going to shine upon you. So behold, the brilliance of Israel, or of the church, was coming from the way of the east. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. Now what is the east? What happens in the east? In the east, the Bible says, is where there is the alpha, where there is the beginning. Oh, okay. So the glory of the Lord is going to come from God. Wow. 25 people got it. So the east talks about the source of the light and the new beginning. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. The Lord said, behold, 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 a new beginning for everyone that is here. I don't know about you, but I take in it. I take in it. Hallelujah. I already told my wife, you know, some, I, I have a statement that I speak to my family. There was a time where things were very difficult. I said, don't worry. Just now we're going to turn the corner. And afterwards we turned the corner. I said, we turned the corner, now we're walking on the road. And I said, hear what now? We're going to go up the mountain now where there's plenty light. Hallelujah. So there's a source. New beginning. The east is where the sun rises. It symbolizes light and new beginning. And this is referenced in Genesis chapter 2 and 8. The east is where Eden was. Wow. The Lord is saying, behold, I'm going to set things back right as it was and supposed to be all the time and you're going to walk with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the presence of the Lord I just tell you this is so strong in our home that sometimes God is talking to me before I talk to him. And all of a sudden sometimes the Lord come and, uh, and the angel will come and sit with me and while I'm talking all of a sudden my tongue I can't talk English. No, so I don't know if that happened to anybody. It's happened to me. Where all of us, I, I'm not fasting. I'm not praying. Yeah, you see, prophets. It's happened to prophets. You're not fasting. You're not, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, like a word of freaking tongues. The presence of the Lord. He, he said, I feel like sitting down by my daughter. I feel like sitting down by my son. But you see, when, it, when the Lord comes, things change. Atmosphere shift. Hallelujah. So, from the east. But what does the east mean? It's a good thing I'm a researcher. The Lord would use your natural educated ability that you were trained for for his spiritual purpose. I'm an analyst. I like to research things. I don't believe everything that is. I need to know what it is. So I like to take. So I take more. And I, this east means divine encounters. So the place of divine encounters is going to come upon the church. The place of revelation is going to come from the church. So if you read it again, it says, you know, and behold, the glory and the brilliance of the Lord is going to come from the place where there are divine encounters, revelation, new beginning, sources of life, creation. Uh, uh, there, there's going to be a release. And this release is the covered. This is the Hebrew word. The glory. When it speaks about the glory there, it is the kavod. K-A-V-O-D. The manifested presence and majesty and overwhelming presence that changes environment. Changes. And that's why because of the presence of the Lord when he comes and he sits next to me, he changes his environment. And I just feel like a wind blowing right around me all the time. And, and when my son's there and I'm preaching, I say, like a wind, they say, Daddy, you by the air condition. I say, no, it's a different wind. I'll be talking to ministers. 
And when there is an assignment or an agenda that is hooked up to heaven, prophetess, I feel whoosh, around me, inside and outside. To explain that, you know, when your paws raise inside my body, in my head, around me, my paws raise, they open the fridge, and then they have a fan. That's how I feel. And sometimes I say, oh, pastor, pastor, I think the Lord wants us to discuss this. So when there's an alignment, the Lord says, a day, I'm listening. And, and hear what? It's it happening all the time. Five years ago, I might have to go and fast and pray. But because heaven is overlapping now with the sons and daughters of God who press into him, that's normal. So those of you who are looking on, you can message what you saw here, the miracle, that is normal. Just as uh, the sister there got filled and some of them here had spoken tongues, that's normal. And when I say normal, it's nothing that you have to fight up for. So this heavy glory, the kavad that speaks of the authority, the power people, in terms of God is resting in this church and I'm prophesying a heavy authority, a heavy power is coming here. It also represents purity and purification. So when the kavad come, your sin go in. Either a prophet is going to see it or you just confess it. Because it cannot stand in the presence of the Lord, the Holy God, that is the God of light and darkness remain. Because the cover is here. It speaks of refinement. It's because of my wife. I look so dapper. Oh. So God have, will connect you with him so that he can refine you. And you notice, you know, Apostle also looking dapper also. Because he has a lovely dapper wife. Give quarters to who quarters is due. Mm, yes, so I want you to write this down because this cover, this glory that is here, I'm not telling you it comes. This glory that is here, it's also an empowerment, Pastor, and revelation. So you just know and just know and just know. There are things that happen across the globe that the Lord will tell me, I'll tell our people, and then they'll say, yes, Pastor. Because it's just that the cover is coming in the ship. It's a revival, a renewal. I prophesy to you also, as we go into the few months at the beginning of next year, you're going to see revival exploding all over the earth. Because the Lord will say, yeah, but it's not man, it's just me. It's not man, it's just me. Hallelujah. Hmm. No. <laughs> this one is something now. The fourth point. There is a call to prepare for transition and alignment. I want that slide to be shown now. There's a God, I know there was a time I came and I spoke about uh, acceleration. And when I spoke, it's as if there was a stretch out. But you see, 111 and 1111 are seeing it every day. Anybody? 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 Wow. Let me tell you now. This is a message from heaven written in the books already. The Lord knows that I'm going to be here to confirm what the Lord is saying. God speaks to me in numbers a lot. He speaks to people differently, but He speaks to me in numbers. That's why he, he, he stamped my wife and I in April 7th. said, hear what? I'm there. So with the understanding I have, when I see it, I said, Lord, what are you saying? So the hotel we stayed at before we came here, the street that we have to walk by had 1101 on one side and 111 on the other side. I said, okay, click, click, click. It's like learning Spanish or learning English. The Lord has taught me this. When we're going to come here, my wife says, find out what is the temperature across there. I checked it and converted it to Celsius because that is what I use. It was 16.1111. Now when these things, 
Repeat. God is saying, pay attention. And it is not as if the Lord is just doing the transition here. The Lord is doing the transition in my life and the Lord is doing the transition with the church. Because I started to find, why am I seeing this all the time? I write it in my journal. Okay. And all of a sudden, next day, turn on the TV, they say call something, something, 11, 11. I say, oh, okay. And then after I say, oh, I think different. Then my wife says, oh, 1 11. The Lord says, you're not paying attention. I have to talk to your wife now. So she's doing Spanish, and she reached number 111. I said, okay, Lord, let me pay attention. So something is happening. So I said, look at the understanding. So the floor that we were on is the 11th floor, which was below the heavens. It was the last floor. So I have to take everything. As I passed by, I passed by 1111, but our uh, room was 1107. And I'll tell you why, seven. Because the Lord says that he is perfecting things. You with me? He is perfecting things. So, so he gave me a little, you know, a, a, a sidebar information that he's perfecting things. But then, <laughs> Apostle, well, not, we went and we minded our own business, going and enjoy ourselves and having a little, you know, dinner. And the bill is one eleven. What? And the next bill was one eleven. What? Twice in one day. Oh gosh, I, I, I feel I feel in the breeze now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, this is in God's agenda. Whoa. Yes, babe. Yes. So the Lord is saying, complete transition assignment, 11-11. So, Colombia. <laughs> so, so, sons and daughters of God, I don't know if you're excited because, see, God just wants to talk to you, you know, unusual. You know, like the 300, you know, lapping up, you know, uh, you know the water. He wants to talk to you unusual. Some people say, oh, wait a minute, I went to that church and they wasn't preaching the Bible, you know, they want to take something. I see he put up a whole set of numbers and explaining numbers, you know, numerology. God created it. And by the way, before I came here, everything I get and all the information I get for the church is for the church. There's another prophet when we have, uh, we have meetings, um, we have meetings on Zoom. So I went to the bank. When I went to the bank and they gave me a number, it was 1010, which speaks of a divine order being established. I said, oh, because we were talking about that on the Zoom, so I showed you. You know, the next time I went back to the bank, guess what was the number? 1010. I said, oh, so I take a snap, send it to him. Now, what that is saying, that's also related to you, because even in, uh, you see 10 there, 10 talks about divine order. 111, but if you look at the 10, so God is saying, I am setting. Divine order in your life. Divine order in the church. Divine order in countries. Divine order in nations. I speak as a prophet today. But when you see this, it means, this is important, you need to write it down because when I finish here, I would, would have uh, uh, completed my assignment. Focus on God's priority to seek his kingdom and alignment. When you see this, focus on God's priority. I have to drop whatever I have to do and I say, hey, wherever God wants me to go and do, I have to do it because it relates to me. It means alignment with God's purpose and order. Write that down. Oh, so, okay. All right. So when I've seen it all the time, I'm like, oh God, that means it. They say, I'm aligned, I'm aligned, I'm aligned. Alignment with his Order and purpose. Order and purpose. Respect and honor in the church. Order and purpose. 
So he's calling for alignment in the earth. The next thing, the next point is one level, level, level means awakening and a prophetic revelation. It means that transition is taking place. Is. Not will be, but is. What comes to my mind when I saw the first 11, 11 and it started to repeat. Uh, I think uh, uh, Perry Stone said during the COVID, 400 pastors pastors died in an organization he knew. It means that. I don't know, but there was war and sometimes people don't know what artillery the enemy is using because I don't think those 400 pastors should have died in one year. 400 pastors in an organization in one year. Untimely. They have not completed Psalm 139 verse 16. All. I want to fulfill every single thing. So there's a transition. A new beginning created. It's an encouragement to step into something fresh, spiritually, relationally, and in ministry, and in business. Do it. Do it. Do it. Now. If there's a business, start it. But pastor, I don't have no money. But we don't have all. What he wants for us sometimes is for us to begin, and then he will supply. The last point related to that. When you see 11, 11, and 1, 11, it's prophetic timing and divine intervention. Prophetic timing, divine intervention. It means that this intervention, this prophetic voice conference is God. It's God. Let me talk like, talk like a person. It's God. Right? Maybe you already listen to me if I, if I talk like that, right? But because he's a son and he's listening, there's a divine intervention that is required for this church to protect you from the future. It has to be done. You know, and when I share this with you, I'm taking it for myself because I'm saying, oh, you know, divine intervention, I have to look at myself to see, okay, what God is divinely intervening in. It also speaks of divine timing, divine timing, divine timing. When we Oh, my old face. So, I just can't get accustomed. I mean, when it happens, I just get thrown off guard. Raise around my face. When we came, we came to a global prophetic prayer summit in Washington to pray for America and the churches. We just a little Caribbean island. And my wife says, We have to be there. And I look in the back of the counter and I said, Where? He says, don't worry, don't worry. We have to be there. I said, okay. What can I do? I can at least register. So I register. And I said, now that I register, how are we getting there? And after what the Lord did, someone sponsored the ticket. I said, okay, great. After I sponsored the ticket, I booked the hotel. I said, but how are we going to stay? Someone dealt with that. It's because it's a divine appointment. So when I got there, I was able to participate in the future of your country. And here what there were witchcraft at the point that we were praying. There was witchcraft which is gathered at the time we were praying. And therefore we knew that and we prayed. Mm. Divine timing. Orchestrated by God. Hallelujah. Now you see also, I put up the last uh, set of numbers there. So one of the hotels we were in was 708. The Lord says, look at the 7, 0, and the 8. And it speaks about a fullness in God's governance. 70. Reach into a fullness of God's governance. God is taking over the church. So if any minister, apostle, or bishop, apostle, you know, some people want to be bishop, apostle, doctor, you know, and people, you know, so I'm going to say, but I'm a, I'm a doctor, apostle also, so it's as if I'm talking about myself, but no, there are some, they want to be a bishop, apostle, doctor, 
and respect me if you say anything otherwise I'll buff you. And the Lord says, I've taken over my church. Whoever wants to work with me, I'll bless them. Hallelujah. Yeah, the breeze is there. Whoever wants to work with God, he'll bless you, man. Whoa. I decide I'm going to work with my daddy. And the it means a new era arising. A new era is arising for the everlasting Christian center. The Lord changing your name. Hallelujah. Because your name is going to say what you do on your destiny and your assignment. And the Lord has a new assignment, Apostle. A new assignment. But you must participate. Hallelujah. Finally, the last thing is open spiritual eyes. Open your spiritual eyes and look and walk. Look and war. Now, if I wasn't looking, I wasn't going to see. And if I didn't see, I wouldn't hear the Lord speaking. And we understand, and I said yesterday, for prophets, you have to look. And Daniel, he looked, and he continued looking. And even when you're praying, and you continue praying, the Lord's going to give you more revelation. You cannot decide, I'm going to pray, God say nothing. You have to pray, continue praying, continue looking, continue looking. Oh, I see. But then, Lord, show me more. Show, and he's going to show you more. And then you have to war. God is so excited. This last scripture that I'm going to read for you and then we're going to pray. We have something called healing room once a month. And at the healing room, the Lord says, hey, what? This is a scripture I gave you. I want you to read it to your leaders and the ministers. So to quote Jeremiah chapter 1, Verse 4 to 11. And I start to read. Whoa! Yeah, he confirmed it. Eh? Pastor. So the fact that you got it means that the Lord is saying it. Because hear what? I'll tell you how God is confirming it, and this is confirmed a fourth time. I'll show you how that is a fourth time. So before I left, I brought the team together and I started to read Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 8. And as I was reading it, we were standing in a circle. And one of our senior pastors, all of a sudden, he started to sway. I read in the scripture, and the man wanted to get slain. I ain't praying for nobody. But then his wife, all about this, stand up, stand up. Hold on like this. So I, said, I felt there was like a, an anointing. But then, i given you this before I read it. I went to Bishop, Bishop Hammond, 7090 celebration. And the first scripture they read was Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 11. My wife would be like, But if, you know, but wait, there's more. So when we went to the global summit, I know I was supposed to be there. Because the first scripture that they read was Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 11. Whoa, the breeze, the breeze, Lord, I love the breeze. Oh. And now, it's confirmed. The reason is, this God is doing among you. Hear what it says. And the Lord gave me a message, and I speak now like the prophet with the message. I knew you before I formed each one of you in your mother's womb. And before you were born, I set you apart. Even before you came to this city and put in some parts in. I appointed you to your position in this church and where you work. And I appointed you my prophet there and in this nation. Oh, sovereign Lord, he said. I, speak. I feel I'm able and you will feel like that. I'm not even trained or qualified. But the Lord will reply to each one of you, do not say, I am not qualified. Do not say, I am not qualified, I am too young. Because I'm using the young even in this hour. And when I send you, wherever I send you, you'll have to go. And whatever I tell you to do, you will have to say. 
Verse 8. Now, don't be afraid of the people and the faces. Or how they look at you. I, the Lord, will be with you. I, the Lord, will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken it, confirmed it, four times before my prophet. Verse 10. Hear your assignment now. Today, I appoint you to stand up now against the nations, to stand up now against the kingdom, to stand up now against the witches, to stand up now against the warlock, to stand up now against anybody in lodge. I, the Lord, appoint you to stand. Some of you you will have to uproot these things. Uproot it from where it is. Tear it down. In your prayer. Destroy it. Overthrow it. Now when you overthrow something, you have to set something up. Others, you just have to build. And you have to plant. Verse 11. Interesting. That is 11. Then the Lord said to me, look. Jeremiah, look, Ricardo, look. Look, Susan, look. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Any one of you looking? What you're seeing? For the Lord says, I speak to you in your dream and what you're seeing. I speak to you in the television, but what you're seeing, I speak to you in what's going on in the earth. And what are you seeing? I speak to you on your job. What you're seeing? God is equipping you. And now the Lord will say to each one of you, as in 1 Timothy 1 and 18, wage a good war from the prophecies that have been given about you and now. Before I came, I read Zechariah chapter 12, some parts there where the Lord was speaking. And this jumped out to me, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 4. I will strike every horse with confusion. The Lord says this. That you will strike the horse. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 4. Now, did the Lord not say that you are horsemen? So if you're horsemen, you're going to be riding against enemy horsemen, you know? I know in the church they say, oh, we are horsemen. But it's war. So if I'm going against a particular army and I'm on the ground and you have ground soldiers, they will go on the ground and after I use some plane, they'll use the plane. And then I'm using horses, they're going to use horse. So the enemy coming on horsemen too. But the Lord says, yeah, we're not going to strike every one of those horsemen with confusion. So when you pray now, <laughs> it is written, Satan, in the book that the Lord will strike you down with confusion. I declare confusion now in that evil gathering. So there's a readiness that is required. Do not be like in Judges chapter 5, 7 to 12, 7 to 27. I'm going to read parts of it. And this is related to Deborah. It says in verse 7 of Judges chapter 5. The warriors became fat and sloppy. No fight left in them. None at all. The church gets sloppy every day. They go in and they read in a message. And the Lord said, uh-huh. And the Lord said, uh-huh. Yeah, and, and the Lord went and he said, hey, no, Lazarus, come boy. Uh-huh. And all they did is just read the scripture. You have become sloppy and fat, the Lord says. Verse 12 says, hear what? Wake up. Wake up, Deborah. Wake up. Wake up. Sing songs on your feet and take prisoners. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, as we end, Hebrews chapter 11 and 28 says that you, his kingdom, you are in the kingdom of God, correct or not? And you are protected in his walls, correct or not? He says his kingdom cannot be shaken. This church cannot be shaken. 
Hallelujah. And verse 19 of Jeremiah chapter 1 says, You will fight, but they will fail. For I am with you and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Let us stand. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands and praise the Lord right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, while the, the musician pray, just pray, pray as the Lord lead. The Lord will take care of you, Romakata, but He wants fight in you, Ramakata Kata. He wants you to press in for your healing. He wants you to press in, Ramakata, for, for your deliverance. He wants you to press in, press in, press in, Rakata Baka. Open your mouth and praise the Lord, Ramakata. Give me the basa. The Bible says, uh, Ramaka, when I pray in the spirit, uh, I'll pray with understanding. Whatever is going through, uh, Ramaka, uh, in your life right now, as you think about it, pray in the spirit. Roteke beke romoto, rasak na katabasanda kabarata, Ramakata basata basunda barakata. Just lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Uh, lift your hands. Uh, Ramakata. Remember, I said your stance uh, in the season. Uh, Ramaka is a stance uh, before the Lord. Ramakata. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Radakata Basa. We praise you, Lord. Rabakata. There is none like you. Robakata Basa. There is none like you. Rokotoka. Who is like our God and King? Ha. Who? Who is like our God? Rasakna Kabasa. He's mighty Rabakata in battle. Rosokota Basa. Praise him. Praise him. Rokota Kabasa. Open your mouth. Praise the Lord. Rasaka Basa. Even for what you see, praise him. Robakasa Kabasa. For the Lord will say, even though it is not there, it will be there. Rasak nakabo rome. Rentakaba praise him, praise him. Romakata ra 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 rasata. Let's spend a few minutes uh, praising the Lord. Rashak nakabo ranta kabasa. Enemy ko, enemy kote. Rentaka, eke namurata kabasa. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Rakata kaba ranta kasa. Can someone praise the Lord? Rakata kasi no no ro 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 ro. Rasaka basa. He is our healer. Rasaka kabasa. He is our redeemer. Rokoto bese. He is our sustainer. Rana roto. Rana roko. Rana kase teke re teke. We have your seed, your offering. Glory to God. We give online. So we're gonna pray, play, play a uh, pray song. Heart one, we can dance. Glory to God, lift it up. If you pray, uh, pray, give it online, just come and make a contact with your phone, the basket. Because the heaven, there's a portal here. Right, man of God, man of God, there's a portal. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Let all grace abound to all that are given in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them exceedingly that they may experience abundance in all things, in everything, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And for those that don't have to give, come and make contact with the basket. Tomorrow you will give in Jesus' name. Because God is a God that gives seed to the sower. The Lord will give you seed to sow in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us stand. Come on.
fear. Tell me all of you. Tell me all of you. What, what, what? Continue tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow we'll be here. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Glory to God. And come with your dancing shoes on. Okay. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just had a vision and I saw like oil but it was dripping from, from, from the heavens. Uh -huh. But I see 
Big drop. Big drop. Big drop. Big drop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's flowing. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, giant drops of oil yeah. dropping in here. So that means that God is going to do some giant stuff in here. Because that's his Shekinah. That's the Shekinah glory right there. That's right. His glory is coming in another dimension on tomorrow. tomorrow. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God Hallelujah. God always do great things on the prophet. Go to the scriptures. You will see it. On the third day, it's only divine. Because number three is a number of God. It's a number of Trinity. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Shakana is the manifested presence of God. We're going to see that tomorrow. It's visible. It's visible. You're going to see it. Shakana can come down and you can see it. That's why the Shakana glory manifests the presence of God. You know, I can see it already over your head. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the shadow yeah, of yeah, things yeah, to yeah, come. Yeah. Shadow oh, of things to oh, come. God. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, God. You better be here tomorrow. Bring your friends and your family. It will bring your enemy. Even your enemy, bring them in the house. The Lord is going to change them. The Lord is going to circumcise their heart. Hallelujah. Because our king, tomorrow. Come on, somebody say tomorrow. Shakana glory. We fall. We manifest. Hallelujah. When you, that one manifest means visible. You have to be able to see it. We gotta go home. Hey. I'm feeling it. Honey. I'm feeling the Shakana already. Hey. Oh, oh my God! Oh. Yay! Yeah. It's the shadow of things to come. I cannot go be here. Oh, it may be here on time tomorrow. Don't miss the Shakana. Da Diane. Amen. Diane. Amen. I'm going to call you when I'm getting drunk, girl. <laughs> Diane, be here on time tomorrow. Shakana is going to be here. <coughs> and this is to everybody. Let us be here on time. Apostle taught us about the time. Redeem the time. The time, the days are what? Evil. The word redeem is not to buy back. When you use the word redeem, people think buy it. Why do you buy what is free? Time is free. We were born into time. Don't buy it. 
you use it. They work circumstantially and advise, not as fully. You get the days and the evil. You will not meet the timing of God. Uh, that kind of amen. You will not meet the timing of God. I say you will not miss the timing of God. God walk in time. God don't need time. We are born into time. God exists outside of time. But it's always on time for us. Please. That's the, that will preach that very soon too. Thank you. Be here tomorrow and be here on time. Can we all say amen? Amen. Perfect. Amen. The vision of the atom bomb, and it just started coming out. That's what I saw. Praise the God. Hallelujah. It's going to be amazing in this house tomorrow. God is just, it's just giving, showing me a bird's eye view. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Please do what. Many of us, what we've done already is just send a flyer, send the flyer, send the flyer, send the flyer. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And put a message under there if you, if you, you know, feel led. It's good to put a message under there. It's good to personalize it. It's good to personalize it. Amen. Glory to God because somebody's life will be touched. Somebody's life will be changed on tomorrow. Amen. 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 Uh, sh even share share the, share it on your face on your Facebook on your Twitter and all of them. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads with me, please. To God, glory to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Can we just give it up real quick for them for the for the apostles, please? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God, my God, my God. Amazing, amazing. Father, we thank you for what we have received. Thank you that we ate from your throne. Oh, Rabba. We ate, we dined with you today, and you fed us, fed us real good in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we're preparing ourselves, my God, oh, hallelujah, I even declare that tonight will be a night of visitation for some people. Baraba Kotoria Kasaka in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. <clears throat> Father, I thank you. Oh, glory to God. For, for, for all, for all the, the first day and everything that was done and deliverance that happened and, and people who received your word and receiver, my God, transformati transformation, my God, in their spirit. My God, I just ask today, my God, that let it be sealed. Let it be sealed by the Holy Ghost of promise. Let it be sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Everything that they have believed you for and that they even have received, most, most importantly, let it be sealed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now may, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen.